Good morning, mate. You good? Yeah, what's happening? I'm all good, mate. Finally got there in the end. <laughs> Took me a while. <laughs> no worries, mate. I was wondering if we could start the podcast, mate, by telling us where your bare journey began. Like in fighting? Yeah, like just getting involved in it, like from the beginning. Where When did you end up getting involved in it? Bare knuckle or just fighting in general? Uh, just the bare knuckle side of it, really. Sure. I'll start with that. Yeah, sweet. So where, where did it actually all begin for you? Uh, are we starting right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but it's funny. I, I, I retired from the UFC, and I was still training. It was about five or six years later. And I remember I go to my gym. I'm training in the morning, and somebody pulls out their phone. And they go, hey, do you see this? And I look over, and it's it's my friend, Joe Riggs. And it said, Joe Riggs does bare knuckle boxing in, in London. I said, man, what is wrong with Joe? I was like, why would he? I didn't understand. I was like, bare knuckle. My, my thought process was going to be in some warehouse with bales of hay around or people with cars. I, like, I, bet, you know, I didn't know what it was. So maybe like, uh, what's that movie with Brad Pitt when he, uh, you know, oh, match. <laughs> So that yes. was my impression. So I click on it and I start watching. And after like the second round, like I looked over at the person, I was like, "Who who have to contact to do this? I got to do this one." Do you know what I mean? And that my 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 stuff changed just like that. I was like, "This isn't what I thought. This is highly skilled. You have to be very technical." It was different than I thought. So eventually, the guy got a hold of people, you know, B, BKB and. Um, after some time, we talked it out, and I, I was able to come over and fight in London. So uh, I just knew being a combative athlete for so long, and uh, this it gave me the feel of the old school UFC or MMA back in the day. It was just something new, different, and uh, raw. So I had to try it. And then, um, you know, back here, not too long after that, back I came back to Indiana where I live, and I, I tried to talk to the state boxing commission, try to see if they would legalize it. And I remember they told me, Chris. You know, Indiana's not going to be the first state to do anything. I was like, all right, we're done here. Didn't think about it for a couple of months. And then a guy named Nate Shook got a hold of me and said, Chris, we're, we're doing bare knuckle. We knew you had a fight, man. We'd love to have you. And I, I was I was like, man, I'd love to do one. Um, I looked at it. Only problem was BKFC1 was on my daughter's wedding day. So I was like, man, I, I'll do it the second one. I can't do the first one. And they're like, all right. So I, I started BKFC2. And then uh, I got it in the commentary BKFC3. And I I've been doing it ever since. I did. I, I fought BKFC four, and then I had surgery on my wrist. And I was like, I'll come back and fight when this gets better. But then I just kept liking the commentary and uh, just been sticking with that. Yeah, great. You do a very good job at the commentary as well, mate. Thank you. Um, with the bare knuckle, did you find the whole thing different to doing the MMA, like the nerves, preparation, everything like that? You know, after having close to 100 fights, all that, you know, I did 15 pro boxing matches, a lot of MMA, all that was fairly similar. Um, I did notice when I first got in the ring, it felt different, though. I remember I remember thinking, man, I've had a lot of fights. I have a lot of experience, but I felt, only way I can describe it is I felt naked out there. I remember when punches started being thrown, I was thinking, man, you've got to be, you got to be careful here because one punch is all it takes. I mean, I felt... That's true with MMA too, but just different. Like you can't block as well, and you can't you can't engage as much because you your defense can't. I mean, you have to have to be perfect defensively, you know, and offensively. You don't hurt your hands, but you got to be more pip, more perfect in bare knuckle. It's more technical, in my opinion. So, getting out there, I remember the guy he was kind of went to throw a right hand. I remember thinking if I could probably land an uppercut, lead uppercut. But if I remember thinking if I miss, he's probably knocking me out. So I remember I backed away and like. It just took me a minute to get my timing down and, and, and get the range. It was It's just different. Yeah. So what did you enjoy the most out of the boxing, the MMA, and the bare knuckle? Man, you know, I loved all of them at, uh, at different times. I love some stuff about all of them. Um, looking back right now, if I had to do everything over, uh, the, the, the last thing I'd probably do is boxing, even though I love it probably up there. I really enjoy boxing, but – it's so damaging, especially the, like it depends. If you're really good, really fast, really slick fighter, Floyd Mayweather, where you don't get hit, that might be one thing. But I didn't have that ability, man. I was a grinder, man. I was inside wanting to 
work the body and, and you know just be a brute and the people who fight like that it does not end well for them i've seen many of those guys they don't talk well they forget things it's a, it's a, it's not a good existence at the end and that would have been me had i not signed my last ufc contract or my first one my big main contract that said you can't box anymore like all right but when i, I retired from the ufc came back and did bare knuckle because when i looked at it i was like this isn't you can't box the same way. I can't even train the same way. I had to change my whole way of training. I wasn't good at, you know, being inside, moving around, blocking punches coming. You can't do that. So you have to get real good at, you know, getting in and out without being hit. You have to close that gap better. You have to use head movement or come off a punch to land your own punches, and then you have to get out. You can't just sit there and trade because then it's a 50-50 fight. You never know who's going to win. Somebody could get cut real easy. So it really changed why I did everything, and – um maybe a better boxer, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's good to have that in the back pocket of being able to just go out there and brawl. But I don't think it should be your first resort ever. I think it should be a last resort. Yeah. I think it's crazy that it's actually proven, isn't it, that bare knuckles a lot safer than uh, your typical boxing with a brain trauma and stuff like that. It, it's not even a question. I mean, it's been shown medically and scientifically, but just as a fighter – it's common sense. I mean, for me, it was, I went out there, you know, talking to family. I've been retired from the UFC for six years before I had a bare knuckle fight, you know, in my forties, I think I was 43. People are like, no, nah, we don't want you fighting ever again. But I was like, you don't understand. I, training's going to be different. Fighting is going to be different. You know, I'm not going to go in there and take the brain damage because I'm not going to take punch like that. You know, if you get take too many punches, you're going to get cut open. The fight's going to be over. Yeah. But think about in a typical boxing round, you might get hit. 15 times with the head, you know, with that big glove, it disseminates a, the blow, but it, it, you know, your, your brain still can hit the skull. And that's a problem. The brain hit the skull so many times, just like in, you know, American football, when all those linemen getting brain damage, well, they keep hitting, they wear helmets, but they, you do this all the time. It's not good for the brain. So after I've kind of explained to people like, okay. And then they watch me fight a little bit like, well, yeah, you're trying to be smarter and slicker and not take as many shots. Yeah. You have to be, if you want to be good at the sport. Yeah, it's, it's why they've took the head guards out with the amateurs and that, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, people don't understand. Like, they think they're doing things for safety. They're not. I always tell people, like, what I'm talking about with, with – with, we're talking about the American football, the NFL, They about the brain problems. I said, no problem. Take away the helmets. Give them leather helmets again. People are like, what? So, yeah, well, you won't run and dive head first. You're going 25 miles an hour and you hit something and abruptly stop. Your brain's going to hit the skull. If you're if – you, you won't do that if you don't have a, a quality helmet. If you have a leather helmet, you're not doing that stuff. It'll change the way people play. Same thing here. It's changing the way people fight. So yeah. um, it just it just makes sense to me. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to move to BKFC London now, Chris. What was your thoughts on the event as a whole? Uh, I really enjoyed myself. I thought it was a great event. Um, we had some very interesting fights, some good matchups. Um, you know, I, I will say I feel like the – the style is a little different everywhere you go. Like we had the BKFC Thailand. That's a little different pace. Um, I feel like the the people in, in England, London, I think they're typically it's a little bit different. Um, a lot of very good pugilists. You know, you had, you know, like Connor Tierney, man, that guy's a problem, a handful for anybody. He moves so well. His head movement's good. He gets his punches when he wants and gets out. It's a very different style from a lot of the Americans. So uh, I thought it was very interesting and good event though. I mean, some, some barn burners, some interesting fights. You know, I, I, I had a great, great time with it. Well, which fight stood out to you on the night? Ah, uh, geez. Um, there was a couple there, obviously, you know, the main, Time, you know, uh, MVP versus Mike Perry. Um, yeah. That was, you know, we've only went to six rounds once. And I know I talked to people who said they didn't really agree with the decision. I was like, well, we look at the fights earlier. I think, um, what was the guy's name? Was it Elias Shepard or something like that? Uh, Ellis Shepard and John Hick. John Hick, yeah. Um, very close fight. You know, else. El very good at head movement, very, I mean, very fast, quick. However, the guy pushing forward, John Hick, ended up winning the decision. So, you know, with bare knuckle, you know, in a close round, 
they're not giving as much to the guy who moves well and dodges punches. It seems like they were given to the guy who presses forward, and, and that was proven in that fight. So when Mike Perry gets a knockdown in round number one, you know, he's already up 10-8 right there, and MVP clearly won the next three. That fifth round, very close. They gave it to the guy pushing forward, you know. As long as you're consistent, you know, you can't complain about it. And then the sixth round, I thought, you know, MVP started off early, but then uh, Mike Perry finished strong. So I wouldn't – I mean, I, I could see how you could say, you know, split decision either way. I, I didn't have a problem with it. I thought they were – I thought it was a very entertaining fight and just about, you know, pure will and heart right there. I mean, Mike Perry was getting beat up, you know, two, three, four rounds, and then he, he just t- tough guy, man. It was a fun fight. Yeah, what did you think of the Danny Christie and Terry Brazier fight? That was my favorite one right there. I mean, those guys went at it, laid each other, laid it all out. Um, and yeah, then Christie's, nice Christie's going to be tough, man. Christie's, I mean, he's, he's, he's a tough guy. He, he was bleeding pretty good early, but then then that left hook, bah, that was that was it. So that, that was my favorite. Those were people getting rocked. Yeah, it was a beauty, wasn't it? And what did you think of the UK crowd? Oh, man, fantastic. Um little little disappointed that we had, a, you know, a little bit of a strike going on with the with the, the tube and, uh, you know, we had a, like a big concert going on and more importantly, the, the AJ Anthony Joshua fought that night. So it was like, <laughs> man, we're, you know, you can't predict these things. We make a card and then two days later that happens. What are you going to do? Um, but man, the, the crowd was so supportive and they, they were good, man. They were, they were a very good crowd. They just fight fans and you got to love it. Where do you see the BKFC being in two years time? Man, I see it blowing up. I mean, the way I see it right now, I always tell people this. I, I say, man, what do you are, are you a you are you an MMA fan? And yeah, I say, are you an MMA fan or are you a UFC fan? You know, well, what's the difference? I go, well, if you're an MMA fan, you're watching Bellator, you're watching PFL, you're watching everything. Why only watch UFC? Okay, you're a UFC fan. You know, what I mean, yeah. you're not a huge so so. And a lot of people I know who are UFC fans. Even that being said, sometimes, I mean, if there's a lot of good action on the ground, they're liking it. But, I mean, if there's a lot of technical chess match going on the ground, they're like, come on, stand them up, stand them up. So they're bare knuckle fans, and they don't know it. Bare knuckle has the best of this. I mean, you can't keep it. I mean, it's pure entertainment. Smaller ring, you know, you two-minute rounds, they encourage action. Um, you can you can clinch, you get punched. Uh, very entertaining, a lot of knockouts. So their UFC, UFC fans are, are bare knuckle fans. They just don't know it. If they see it, when they see it, they become even bigger. Like, oh, I like this. You know, it's it's it's, it's fun to watch. It's so cheap right now, sixty bucks for the year, like five dollars a month. It's so such a good deal. Um, but I think if the more people we can get to see it, the more fans we're going to create. And I think people will be like, man, this is a viable option. And you know, MMA. You know, they've seen that. You know, boxing. They've seen it. This is something different, and it's a uh, it's a whole new animal. I think. At least myself and the people I know tend to. I really like it. Yeah, definitely, man. It's a, it's the fastest growing combat sport for a reason, in my opinion. I mean, is that your thought too? I mean, do the people like whenever I, whenever I tell somebody to watch it, and they do. They, they're, they're encouraged. That, like, well, when's the next one? It's not like, eh, it was all right. Everybody know likes it. Yeah, like I've all, I've been a Ben Knuckle fan for a while, and obviously when the BKFC come along, it was just like a Champions League, like a. Yeah. version of everything with all these superstars coming over and these great fights it is it, it's amazing is there any stars or mma ufc people that you'd like to see come over to the bare knuckle oh yeah i'm wanting to get nate diaz over i think this would be right up his alley um that'd be huge right there i mean something really interesting for him to do i mean it would fit his image and his style just to come out here and fight um nate would be a great one uh for the sport to just get eyes on like i said when people see it they're gonna like it they just don't know enough about it yet they don't ever heard about it some people and when they do they're like what people are fighting no gloves they just don't they don't understand and then uh but when people finally like and i know a lot of people who like ah, i'm not watching that was me you know that was me at the beginning i was like well, who would why would people do this and then when i watch it my perception changed and i think we're going to get a lot of people who, you know that's why you get a nate someone like nate who could turn heads and people would watch it. i think it's like oh man there's five cards on that fight that were awesome. I like this sport. You know, it's just a matter of getting something like that. So that's that's who I'd like to see come over right now. Him or his brother, Nick. Nick's the same way. 
Yeah, I think there's a high possibility that he'll do it as well. If if the money's right for him, I think he actually will come over and do it because that's what he is a box like boxer, and he that was one of his main attributes in the UFC. And Nate's just a competitor, man. I mean, I could see him wanting to get involved with something like this because, first of all, I mean, it just goes with who he is as a person. But do a fight, you know, he just wants to fight. And uh, if we came up with a good offer, and, and that, that'd be a fantastic uh, for everybody, in my opinion. Yeah, who would you who would you like to see Conatini out fighting next? Fighting him or fighting who? Who would you like to see Conatini out next fighting? Whew, man, it's a tough one, man. I mean, he's he's tough. I, I mean, you, you, before too long, I mean, you probably think one more and then give him like a Palomino or something. But I'm not sure who. I mean, I don't wonder if uh, I would say Mike Richmond, but he's up in weight class now. Um, I think his next shot is going to be um, for either the interim or might be for the belt. Yeah, I mean, you know, it'd be an interesting one is a fight between him and Evan Brito because uh, Brito has a very difficult style to fight as well, very elusive and hard to deal with. That that would be such a good technical fight. I think that'd be very interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah you ever going to consider coming over for one of the BKFC UK shows? Who, me? Yeah, you know, like the ones like what's happening in November, like at Newcastle. Yeah. And them oh, ab absolutely. And, you know, we, we were at the last one. I, I went to the, yeah, the yeah, first yeah. one. I plan on trying to come to as many as possible. Um, it just depends on what's uh, feasible for the company and what they want. I'm not real sure at this point. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, I've got my, my plans for, you know, the rest of uh, – October. That's it right now. So <laughs> hopefully they'll send us over. I think it's a Newcastle, is it not? Yeah, Newcastle. Yeah. I know it's a great main event right there. You got uh, Nick uh, Mick Terrell is going to go against that uh, Stephen Banks, who's fought for Thailand twice. That should be a great main event. So I hope so. I mean, I'd really like to come over there. I've never been to Newcastle, but I'd look forward. To it. I've been to Birmingham. I've been to London. Um, I'd love to come to Newcastle and. Uh, get the feel for the environment and just see yeah, the fight fans up there. That's one thing I've always felt that you have great fight fans in, in, in England. So I'd love to come up there. Um, not sure exactly what they got planned for me and Sean right now, but I know I talked to Sean. Sean's wanting to come too. Yeah. It'd be great to have you over here, mate. And um, I won't keep you for too long, pal, but before we wrap it up, is there any shout outs or anything that you'd like to give out or anything you'd like to say? Man, just uh, anybody paying attention, keep watching. Um, I like to give a uh, on my Instagram, Chris Lights out loud. I like to give little uh, recaps of all the all the main fights that happened. You know, I just talked about you know a couple of the main fights we had, main event. Uh, Britt Hart went in the title, and man, if you guys haven't got to watch the last BKFC Montana, uh, Louis Lopez versus Dylan Schulte. Man, what a fight! Five knockdowns. And Four rounds, those guys went at it. Just when I thought Louis was done, he comes back so oh, and wins. So, man, if you, that right there is what we, we like to see with uh, BKFC, people coming out and, and just lay it on the line and getting up off the canvas. I love that. So uh, if you want to watch a quick breakdown, just uh, check out my, my Chris Lights out loud on Instagram, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep you guys abreast of what's going on. Yeah, I'll put the link for your Instagram in the description of the video. Thank you. Not a problem, mate. Hopefully we can catch up very soon when there's some more news out on the future events and things, Chris. Hey, man, anytime. I'd love to come on here. But, uh, man, I just, you know, I'm all in on this sport now. Um, the more I've been doing with it and the more growth we've been getting and the more you know, eyeballs have put on it, the more energy we get. It's just, it's a lot of fun. This has really reminded me a lot. Like, I started fighting in 1998. You know, I was yeah. there before Dana White and Zufa were around and, and when that they first came on the scene and then, you know, it started growing in 2002, you know, 2003, you know, when I was fighting for those guys. This gives me a lot of similar feeling, except it's happening more rapidly faster. It's growing faster. So um, I think this has nothing but a lot of potential, and I'm really loving being a part of it. So if you guys want to jump on board when it's still uh, new, jump on now. It's fun. Not from exciting times ahead, mate. <laughs> Great, so we'll catch you very soon, Chris. Thank you very much for your time, Paul. Hey, thank you very much for having me. No problem. Speak soon, bro. Later.